Hello, this video is going to focus on the Poisson distribution. Specifically in this video I'm going to look at um, the underlying assumptions when you would use a Poisson distribution and the application. I'm not going to focus so much on the underlying theory, well at all on the, uh, on the underlying theory, but I will do that in the next video. So the next video that comes along, um, you will I will go through a thorough derivation of the Poisson distribution. Um, it is in my GitHub account where I'm at here. Um, you can see it fully here. And I'll put it in the link at the bottom of the uh, page as well, of course. Uh, oop, so yeah, it's in there, and I've got both this uh, Jupyter notebook I'm working with here, and also a full PDF um, derivation of the Poisson distribution, sort of from first principles, which I'll do in the next video. Um, whilst I'm talking about Jupyter notebook, um, one of the things I've found really quite useful and interesting recently is that uh, Python have put together all of their scientific packages. Uh, anything that's going to use many data science but not just that um, into one big package now called Anaconda so uh, provided you keep your Anaconda distribution up to date as far as I can tell um, you have access to an awful lot of uh, Python packages that you don't have to install individually they all, they all come together uh, I, you know, uh, which I've used in this demonstration here and part of the application I've, I've done all sorts of things I've done things like um, well, I've used all sorts of packages. For example, in the Jupyter Notebook that comes with Anaconda, you can do LaTeX, so we've got some maths. You can do a call to the Bash scripts, so you can download some data. Um, you've got Markdown, um, which you can use. It's more part of Jupyter's capability, really. You can use you know, Pandas. I've not installed it separately. You know, the data frame, sort of data science package that comes with Python, that's part of Anaconda, so you don't have to install it separately. Similarly, I think a bit further down, I've got matplotlib, I've got scipy, I've got numpy. All of these things that you uh, kind of are going to need to use that are part of the sort of Python, uh, let's call it an ecosystem for doing science and data science, do come do come together in one package, so it's really quite useful. Um, this specifically, what I've done here is a Jupyter notebook, and uh, this is kind of a, really neat the way this presents things. It's sort of, you know, it's, um, it's a high standard presentation, I think. This is just marked down, but you can do code together with um, this will work this here as okay it's not working here on my github account but if you were to down, if you were to put this into a Jupyter notebook and fire it up with Jupyter you would get a link um, this uh, presentation here would actually be embedded not a link sorry it would be embedded within the document so here I've got my sort of full derivation of the Poisson distribution so say it's all in my github uh, directory but you can also embed it in. Okay, it's not done that on GitHub for some reason. We're going to dwell on that. You can also do things like, uh, you know, you can do some maths. You've got LaTeX, so it's nice maths as well, not the sort of ugly stuff that, you, that Word tends to do. But it looks nice, um, so you can use that too. And, you know, as I was saying just a minute ago, um, you can download, all within one document, you can do all this. You know, you can download um, some data. You can show the code for that. You can show uh, code that you've used to do the data frame here and you know so basically code mixed in with maths mixed in with markdown mixed in with actually shell commands mixed in with in, you know embedding uh, another document in there you know so it's a very sort of media intensive lots of lots of media intensive very sort of content rich let's go with that uh, lots of lots of different things coming together in one place uh, that uh, makes it sort of Jupiter quite powerful I think Okay, so that's enough talking about the tools I've used to do this. I'm going to talk a little bit about the Poisson distribution. As I say, I'm not going to go into the details. I will derive the Poisson distribution from first principles, and it's it is an interesting uh, derivation actually. So, uh, particularly if you've got sort of A level maths or your maths is around that level, and you want to do something that's going to stretch it a little bit more. There's lots of interesting things in the full derivation of the Poisson distribution. There's things like uh, integrating factors. There's um, some infinite series and cancellations, and you know, and this sort of thing. There's cancellations within infinite series, you have to break them up in different ways um, and pull things out of that. There's, it's a good derivation to do, sort of, you know, uh, A-level math stroke, first year university kind of level math, it's, it's quite nice. Um, okay, so we're going to talk a little bit about more about the Poisson distribution. So, first of all, we're going to work where it's used. Um, and I always tend to think about it, if you've got a number of events, a number of things, events, we call them generically, of course, happening in a given period of space or time, then it's likely to follow a Poisson distribution and some practical examples that do. The number of calls in a football match, the number of calls to a switchboard. So here your period of time is the match, here your period of time is an hour, switchboard in an hour. Uh, the number of 
floors per metre squared in a given section of material. All of those things will follow a Poisson distribution. The underlying assumptions of a Poisson distribution, This some of the language I've, I've found, particularly in old A-level books, can be a little bit confusing, but I'll elaborate on it here as, as I go through each one. Um, and also these, when, I do, when you look at this talk here, I will say this at the time, but these relate directly to the derivation, so it's quite nice that you start with these three assumptions, build up all the maths, and uh, you wind up with a Poisson distribution at the end, that's quite nice. So events occur singly, um, one after the other. What they tend to mean, or the we interpretation of that is you can't have two things happening in the same moment or in one in one uh, one area of space for it to be a Poisson distribution. There's either an error in that in that one um, meter squared, uh, you know, in that one particular position in the meter squared of material, or there's not. So you can't be having two errors in there. You can't be having two goals scored in one instant in a football match. So that's what that assumption is getting at. And it becomes clear when you relate to the, to the full derivation. Uh, events are independent of each other. So what happens in, say, the first half of a football match does not affect the second. That's that's what that assumption's getting at there. Um, the mean number of events per interval is proportional to the length of the interval. So what that means is that, you know, uh, let's say if you double the length of a football match, you would, in fact, expect double the amount of goals. Uh, if you treble it, you'd expect three times the amount of goals, Okay. So the closer your actual distribution matches that assumption, the 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 better you know the, the more likely the better the Poisson will fit it. So those are the underlying assumptions. As I say next time I'll talk about the full derivation. There's one kind of nice alternative one I've taught uh, Poisson distribution. I haven't necessarily gone through it from first principles because um, the math is quite quite hard. Uh, but there's one kind of nice alternative uh, explanation. It it doesn't fully uh, define the distribution, but it's it's quite quite neat. So you just start off with just um, an expansion of e to the lambda t, uh, where lambda is your Poisson rate, which we'll talk about later on, and t is the uh, given time interval. Then you expand that out, it's just expansion of lambda, uh, e to the lambda, just the exponential expansion, uh, it's the Taylor series, nothing more than that. Then uh, you would divide both sides by e to the lambda, which is going to give you 1 on this side, and you're going to see all those lambdas that were e to the positive lambda, and now you're going to e to the minus lambda, because we divided through by that. Well, the neat thing is, of course, we, now we've got 1 on this side here, um, these things all add up to 1. But you can clearly see that, you know, you could form a distribution, so this could be the property that x is equal to 0 for, for something. Property that x is equal to 1, property that x is equal to 2. There's no real link to the previous set of assumptions, but it therefore is a valid um, statistical distribution which you could use. What it does exactly, we're not saying, or, or of what use it would be, we can't really draw out of this. But, um, yeah, but we're at least we can see from here that this is a valid statistical distribution because it sums to 1. So that can sometimes be a starting point if you don't want to do the full derivation, uh, if you're teaching it anyway. Um, so, okay, once we've, we've covered most of the things now, we've spoken about um, when to use a Poisson distribution, we've spoken about the underlying assumptions and what they mean. Um, we've looked at a little nice alternative way you can think about it. Basically, this is your first Poisson, the property that x is equal to 0 for a Poisson, so 0 events. Probably that x is equal to 1 is 1 event, would be this one here. Probably x is equal to 2, 2 events, would be this one here, etc, etc. So let's look at uh, modelling the number of goals in a football match. So, um, OK, now, again, this here is, this website has all of the goals uh, season by season in the Premiership and other divisions. Uh, I think here I've downloaded the Premiership goals for last season. You can see the command to do that. Again, this is quite neat that you can do all, all this in one go. You can go straight from, you can get the theory of how the Poisson distribution works, which is handwritten notes effectively. I can put that in here. Uh, I've got a bit of maths, LaTeX, looks a bit nicer. I've got that in here. Uh, it is quite handy having all this in one space. Okay, so there you go. I've downloaded the data. That's just showing the download message. Um, there are ways of making this a bit tidy. You might not want to show this app, but I'm pretty sure... You can uh, you can tune Jupiter not to show the app, but for every single thing that you put in these little cells here. Okay, this is the response we're getting, but I haven't done that. But you mean look into that by all means. Um, so we're importing. Next thing we'll import the data into 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 uh, so, so we can read the data in and put it into a data frame using the pandas package. And uh, that's just read the data in. That's been downloaded. There might be a way you can link directly to the data. I wonder if I just uh, here. If I put this HTTP directly into here, I wonder if I could get it straight. I'm not so sure. But uh, anyway, yeah. We went well on that. Uh, and we have the full season of results from last year. Okay. 
And it's just doing a head to so, so you just see the top five in the data frame. And you see what it looks like. Uh, next, we just need to do a little bit of manipulation because you can see what we've got here. If we go further up, we've got the full time goals, full time home goals, full time away goals. Well, to get the actual uh, number of goals scored, we're going to want to add those two up. So I've added an extra column in the data frame where I just put the two together. Um, didn't actually do this bit here. I'm going to I'm going to update the comments on this because they're not too good. It was kind of kept stuff so I was going along. Next, I've looked at the max number of goals. Turns out to be nine. Um, and then I've just basically looped over to find. Effectively, I'm forming a histogram here because all I'm actually doing is counting uh, the sum. This is looping from zero to. Uh, well, it's actually just this because remember in Python we we start at this one, but we don't include the top limit. So the plus one means that we we end with the max g here. So I'm looping from 0 to 9, and I'm just counting the number of times that I get, uh, say, 0 goals. Number, uh, what will happen with this this line here, it's going to look at, uh, let's say I've got uh, 0. It's going to i is 0 at this point. It's going to look down this column, and every time it sees a 0, it'll equate to true. Now, true is the same as 1, so therefore um, it counts as a 1. And you do that for every single uh, entry in the column. Every time it equals 1, you flags with a 1. Every time it doesn't, it's flags with a 0. When, when you add them up, therefore, when you do a sum, it will count all the trues as 1s. So um, summing them gives you the total number of times you've got 0 goals, total number of times you've got 1 goal, etc., etc. And then if we keep going down, um, we're going to actually now sort of look at... Um, we've got the... We've got the actual distribution. We're now going to look at getting the theoretical distribution and see that they do actually does actually tie up pretty well. So we're going to need a mean for our theoretical distribution, which should just be the mean number of goals. Um, yeah, this bit here, I've, I think you can see that uh, not the most elegant bit of code. I really should have looped to do this, but anyway, I've worked out the Poisson distribution for zero, uh, for one, etc. These are Poisson probabilities up to nine. Of course, um, you know. I will probably upload this at some point and correct this, but I should have used a loop similar to this to do that. Um, just because, let's say I do another season and I want to do the same thing again, well, you know, good programming practice will tell you that, you know, this could now be 10 goals. Maybe there's a, a very exciting game with 10 goals and I don't want to have to go and faff about altering uh, this one line here, which had never been coded in this way in the first place. So yeah, other than the fact that I should really should have used a loop, I think you can see what's happening. I'm doing the probability of getting zero goals, one goals, two goals, etc. I've then looked. Uh, this is just basically pulling out the the um, total number of games because here are probabilities. So to get the from expect to get the expected um, number of games with uh, that, that given number of goals, say zero goals, I want to multiply the probability by the total number of times that that happens. It's just if you think about um, similar situation, you know. You know from experience, if you toss a coin 200 times, um, you're going to get ahead around about 100 times. All you're doing there is the number of times you did the trial times by the probability. It'll always give you the expected number. And to make these two things on a sort of comparable scale, the actual here and uh, the Poisson here, I need to just multiply by the total number of uh, games, yeah, which is this here. So, okay. So then I've got goals expected. Um, um, well, I've just multiplied each one, looped over all the probabilities and multiplied each one by the total number of games. All right, so now just doing a little bit of plotting with matplotlib. I keep going down, and you can see that, okay, I think I think this is reasonably obvious how this comes together. Uh, again, you've got the total number of goals here. Again, the, oh, this bit's hard coded, probably want to change that. And you can see that. The expected and the actual match pretty well. This we're a bit out of four, which kind of seems a bit of a shame because all the others match pretty well. But uh, you can see force pulled up a bit, and we've dropped back down there. So yeah, it's pretty close. It's not perfect, but um, you wouldn't expect it to be. Um, but it does show that you know it does follow a Poisson distribution. So um, that's it. As I say, next video I will do something on doing the Poisson distribution from first principles. It is a nice bit of maths to do that. So. I hope you tune in next time and uh, please check out if you want to download this now. I will be up so far in this particular repo. I've got here the uh, Poisson distribution, the normal distribution from first principles. I'm going to do, probably do a couple more. So uh, start the repo if you want to, if you want to keep up with that. Okay, I'm just going to.